like the power. Just work with me. <laughs> I got on this attire. In honor of our next I Am Black 365 guest, Huey Newton. <laughs> Okay guys, I am so excited to be covering one of my favorites, all time favorite black man from history. You know, he's a regular brother, an everyday brother, and he took his life and did something great with it. You know, he turned his whole life into a legacy. So today we are going to talk about the famous one and only Huey P. <laughs> If you are new here please subscribe like comment share all of that and don't forget to turn on the bell for your notification bless today we are going to be doing another episode to our i am black 365 series if you don't know my i am black 365 series is just a dedication to all of the black people um events things like that that have happened surrounding black people that have influenced me and i think will be a great influence to you guys so we're going to be covering them in our i am black 365 because it's going to take more than just the month of february black history month do not give us enough time like they gave us the shortest month and we got all this history don't make no sense but we'll get on to that later on in life um so today i do want to focus in on he, he was born february 17th 1942 in louisiana we just gonna stop right there. Louisiana. Um, he did not have a long upbringing in Louisiana. He only lived there until he was about three years old. And then his family relocated to Oakland, California. He was the youngest of his seven siblings. And he had a huge family presence in his life. His dad was present. His mom was present. And like I said, he was the youngest of seven siblings. I highly recommend reading his book, Revolutionary Suicide. Revolutionary Suicide. It's a great book. I'm actually reading it currently. Um, and it really just shows you how huge of an impact his family had on him. Um, his dad was a black man growing up in Louisiana in 1942. You know, he did experience, um, racial issues and racial tensions when he was in Louisiana. And that was a great reason why he chose to move to Oakland, California. Um, he definitely thought it was going to be a better upbringing for his children, as well as being in a better environment for himself. Um, his father was a provider, a protector of his family, you know. His father had seven children and his mother never worked a job. His father was so adamant on the fact that he was the breadwinner and he was going to bring home the money. He sometimes worked two to three jobs at a time just to support his large family. He did what had to be done. Y'all can learn something from that, brothers um but yeah so um at the age of three years old Huey and his family relocated to Oakland California around this time it was like 1945 and he was still just a youngin growing up he did not know that they were living at poverty level they were growing up poor but he did not know that at like the I time said, his family his moved to Oakland he then entered you know like his school age years and he did struggle throughout his elementary and high school years he got into plenty of fights and it was basically just because of his baby face many people were you know making smart comments about his baby face and how he looked so young or he was too cute to be a boy and you know he had to stand up and hold his ground at that day and age so he would fight also, the fact that his middle initial was P, they would emphasize it and call him Huey P, like Huey P on himself. And that was another reason that he got into many altercations while he was going throughout school. Um, in school, though, he did meet two of his closest friends um, who he ended up growing up with. One eventually went on to become a 
Black Panther Party member. Um, another one of those kids, actually, he dedicated a chapter of his book to them. His last name was Crawford. So, Mr. Crawford was um, Huey P. Newton's childhood friend, and they went to school together. Crawford was kept behind a couple grades because he struggled with reading very much like many of the kids at that time um, during the 1950s and 60s. So this young man, Crawford, like I said, was very close with Huey P. Newton. And actually, he never found his self-love. You know, back in that time, you know, they were taught black is bad, white is good, black people are dumb, white people are smart, black people are janitors, white people are doctors. You know, they would tell him, like, if you pick your job as a doctor, as a black man in 1965, they would be like, nigga, no ain't no doctors pick something realistic for your lifestyle you know so Crawford was the victim of that situation and he never learned how to read he actually became an alcoholic and he just became another st statistic to society you know and Huey dedicates one of his chapters to him because just like so many of our brothers they're too ashamed to admit that they don't know how to read and just ask for help um he graduated high school illiterate so he taught himself how to read after high school um and then in the 60s he went on to Merritt College after that he went to jail for a knife assault and then once he got out of jail he went to the University of California Santa Cruz and that's where he graduated with his PhD so even though he grew up and didn't know how to read he taught himself how to read and he attributed a lot of that to his older brother melvin um melvin who graduated from a college so they were doing great things for themselves even though it was not expected of them um in 1966 former college mate bobby seal and huey newton joined together to create the black panther party you know um, and they once he gathered together with other like-minded individuals, I believe it was about 10 to 12 of them. And when he was younger, they actually did the same thing. When he went to elementary school, him and about 30 to 40 other young black men. So they were still boys at this time. They were like 13, 14. They all were, you know, the beginning generation of integrating schools you know so the 30 to 40 black brothers that he we knew and had got together had got together they called themselves the brotherhood and what they basically did is they stood up for each other against you know racist white teachers racist students parents staff you know they all stuck together if one of the brotherhood members was being mistreated they would you know stand up for him and stand in solidarity with that brother to just let them know you can't treat us like this you will not treat us like this and there are people who care about us about me to speak up for me so he had a great deal of just courage ever since he was young so him starting the black panther party was just right up his alley Part he, to he, the black panther party um the political goals that they created were called a 10 point program um and it was basically to stop the exploitation of black people as well as they wanted black people to be exempt from going to the army so called for better housing jobs and education for african americans um, like I said, it also called for an end of exploitation um, to the black community. <laughs> the Black Panther Party's overall goal was to improve the standard living conditions and lives of black people. Um, and I'll do a whole nother segment to my I Am Black 365 about the, the Black, black Panther Party. Um, and we will go into depth about, you know leaders for the Black Panther Party, like Bobby Hutton, who died at the age of 17 um, at the hands of police brutality. And he was killed innocently, and we will cover him in the Black Panther Party in another series.
in 1970. The Black Panther Party was looking to make all these great gains and do all these great things, um, you know, for people of color or for black people within the community. Then in 1970, um, during a simple traffic stop, Huey P. Newton was accused of killing and murdering a police officer. He was tried and then charged, and then it became a huge phenomenon worldwide. Um, it was known as the Free Huey trial. Free Huey became a popular slogan of the day. Um, so the courts and things felt very much pressure. I think they didn't have enough evidence. But yeah, so they felt very much pressured to, you know, let him out. So his charges were dismissed and he was acquitted of all charges. Okay, so he was acquitted of charges. And when he came home, he was sensationalized. He was famous and he really did not like all the attention. He felt like being a revolutionary and being a leader was not about fame and it, it took regular degular everyday people to really bring about change you have to be out in the trenches to understand the trenches and understand what needs to be changed you have to walk in those shoes to understand what's gonna be the best way to bring about that change because you can't just smack a sticker on it and be like oh it's fixed it don't work like that so in 1970, he was um, arrested and acquitted. Um, and then after that, he unfortunately developed a drug problem. So it's the 1970s now. Crack has been placed into our neighborhoods. People of color have now been infiltrated by the war on drugs. So J. Edgar Hoover was a huge part in the breakdown and the destruction of the Black Panther Party. Like I said, we'll talk about that on another segment. And he also made it a really big thing to try to take down Huey Newton. He didn't like the fact that a black brown man was bringing together so many black people for change, that they were asking for the bare minimum. They were asking for their civil liberties. They were asking for, you know, freedom they were asking for peace that's all they were looking to obtain and j edgar hoover did not like the fact that it was a black man bringing other black people together to you know kind of spark this change so he orchestrated the breakdown and destruction of the black panther party once huey newton came out of jail he wanted to take the black panther party in a new direction um he wanted to you know also keep the focus on you know making sure that there was no police brutality or no exploitation of the black people. But he also wanted to do things that benefited the black community, um, like community interconnectedness um, and services for the poor. Um, he wanted to do the breakfast program and then also the transportation of families to visit their loved ones who had been incarcerated. So those things came all about during the 1970s and it was just not as efficient and as effective as he thought it would be because J. Edgar Hoover was working so hard to break down the party of, he was just trying so hard to break down the Black Panther Party. Um, before Huey P. Newton went to jail, there was about 20 members or so to the Black Panther Party. When he came out, there had been, a, they had been established um, within 40 groups so they grew from 20 members to 40 groups um as well as becoming an international thing he went to china and when he got to china they were greeting him with so much love and appreciation you know they were just in love with what he was doing here in america so they were really appreciative of him he gained a lot of foreign allies at that time and America did not like it because he was bringing light and attention to the fact that black people were being treated injusticely injusticely so during the 1970s about mid 1970 1974 to be exact um Huey P Newton was charged again with murder this time he was accused of murdering a 17 year old girl and he flee to Cuba. Um, at this time, he had grew an addiction to drugs. 
Crack cocaine had become very popular within the urban communities at this time. The war on drugs was very much present at this time. And he himself had just grown so much anxiety around, you know, his fame and J. Edgar Hoover trying to take him down. He had developed a strong addiction to crack cocaine. So in 1974, when he was charged with um, murdering a young lady, he fled to Cuba. He fled to Cuba for three years and he stayed there claiming that he was innocent. And then he was brought back to America in 1977 and he was tried. He was again acquitted of all charges. Um, and then a short period after that, he was murdered. So a drug deal going wrong. Very unfortunate. But like I said, he was a regular brother and he just wanted to see the advancement of his people. In his book, Revolutionary Suicide, he talks about the difference between reactionary suicide and revolutionary suicide. So reactionary suicide is being like you're overwhelmed by the conditions that you live in. So you kill yourself. Revolutionary suicide is more just like. You speaking out for the advancement of your people, you trying to gain y'all rights, and because of you speaking out in those ways, in those terms, you become a threat to American society, the American government, you know, so they try to destroy you, they try to kill you, they try to close your mouth, silence you, basically. Um, so, he just wanted to see the advancement of his people, and he did what he thought would be best which would just which was just take care of his own people um you know teach his own people i'm a huge um i'm a huge believer in his philosophy so he had the 10 point program and it was basically just saying things like we want freedom um we want full employment for our people we want an end to robbery by the white man of our black community so that was basically just like the exploitation of them um, we want decent housing we want education for our people that exposes the true nature of the decadent american society um we want black men to be exempt from military service we want an immediate end to police brutality and murder of black people we want freedom for all black men held in federal state county and city prisons and jails we want all black people when brought to trial to be tried in court by a jury of their peer groups um so I agree with a lot of the things he said. I think we should be educating our own people. We should not be going to school, reading their books, letting them teach us his story. Because that's all history is. It's their version There's of so what happened. There's so much good stuff about Huey P. Newton. I don't know where to start. The many accomplishments he made with the breakfast program. Bringing together black people in a unified environment to where they were protecting and standing up for their own people you know just questioning the white man on who are you to come into our community and tell us how to do things the black panther party was hope for people at a time when they thought hope no longer existed you know huey p newton came after the civil rights movement um he was fighting for change during like the 1960s when civil rights movements were going on but there had already been so many decades before where they had watched them sit in and get brutally beat up or you know hosed down in the middle of the street by firefighters or you know attacked by police dogs so they had they had seen enough of that and they wanted something new so here we go. Rip, hold on. I couldn't find the shotgun, but y'all get the point. Now we all said, what's up? What you want to do? You think you finna stick them dogs on? Bah, 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 bah. None of that. What is you talking about? We're defending ourselves. We not calling no police to come over here and help us. We not relying on no white man to come and defend us we're going to defend ourselves you know he got those same people in his community he got to know them 
He asked them questions. Aren't y'all tired of this? Ain't y'all tired of this? What are we going to do about it? What are y'all going to do about it? What are y'all going to do about it? What are we going to do about it?